let's derive the acceleration, velocity, and position functions of time in one dimension for constant acceleration. We're going to call that one dimension the x-axis. The acceleration is some function of time, but it's just a constant. The velocity is an antiderivative of the acceleration. That's the antiderivative of a constant, which is just a times the time plus and some additive constant c. We can find what that is by evaluating the initial conditions, which is the value of this velocity function at t is equal to zero. Well, that is this additive constant c, since this term is zero. If we identify this as the initial velocity, which we call v sub x naught, then we have our new velocity as a function of time, which is equal to v subscript x naught plus acceleration times time. The position as a function of time is now going to be the antiderivative of the velocity function of time. So that's equal to this constant, the initial velocity times time, plus the antiderivative of this term, which is then 1 half a t squared, plus some additive constant. And we can find that constant by the initial conditions, which is the value of the position function at t is equal to zero. Well, this is zero, this, that's just the additive constant c, and so we give that a name, the initial position, we often call x naught. There we have now our final position as a function of time, which is the initial position plus the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration t squared. So these are the functions. They're vector functions of time for the acceleration velocity and the position. They tell you at each point in time what the acceleration velocity and position vectors are. If we were to let's look at a graphical representation, my, if I have some positive acceleration that's some constant, say I have a car that's accelerating, so this is a of t, it has some constant positive acceleration. To get my velocity, I have to know what my initial condition is. So let's say I have some initial velocity equal to zero, then my velocity function would be equal to, as a function of time, is equal to a t, so it's some increasing straight line. And then finally, what does my position look like? Well, that also depends on where it starts. Let's say my initial position was equal to negative five meters, and so my position function of time would be negative five, initial velocity was zero, so plus one half a t squared. So it starts at some negative value and I get a positive parabola up. Anyway, so these are what the constant velocity graphical representations look like. Acceleration is a constant then. The velocity is going to be some straight line where the slope is given by the value of the uh, constant acceleration. And then the position function of time will be some parabola given by the acceleration as well.